Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome back to my art journaling channel. Today we're looking at an Inspired by a Collage series and we're looking at Little Raven Ink or Courtney Diaz's style of collage um, art journal pages. So we're just starting off here and I'm painting the page with the Vibrant Turquoise um, Dilutions paint and this page has been done in Bubblegum Pink, both of the Dilutions range and it's in the Dilutions journal. So what I've got here is a whole heap of just ephemera collage bits and pieces I've got in my um, collage basket. Uh, this is an old thing from the Powerhouse Museum. There's free postcards I picked up from um, coffee shops, an old photo, pieces of newspaper, magazines, bits and pieces from National Geographic, all sorts of different pieces. What I'm just doing is cutting up strips. Um, no shape, size, you know, I could be using a trimmer but I want them to be weird and wacky and random. This is an old screen print that I had um, I, uh, from at least 10 years ago. So they're all bits and pieces that have been hanging around for ages and it's just time to use them up. And what I'm going to be doing is um, using them, one, to make the scrap monsters that I'll talk about in a minute and to make some borders on my pages. Now the pages I've just used here are um, pages I've scanned in um, journal pages that I really liked or they're the excess paint pages. I use a piece of watercolour paper behind my art journal pages so any excess spray or paint goes onto those, any bits of stenciling go onto those and I'm, you know, they've become works of art in themselves so I've been scanning those and printing them out if I wanted something interesting. So all I'm doing now is just going around the edge of my two pages I am creating um, some borders. No real rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it, just putting down things, thinking if they work there I'll stick them down. I'm also using some washi tape which is what the, the gold shimmery bit is and I'll, you'll see that a bit later on as well. The reason I'm doing two pages at once is because I had all the stuff out. Uh, as simple as that. It's a fairly quick process. I know I've sped this up a lot um, but you know if you've got the stuff there you might as well do it. So that's, that's the reason why. So I just stick everything down. There's no real worry about it. The only thing I did change was because it was so turquoise and that strip of paper was a bit turquoise, um, I decided to put the black underneath it. But I quite like that you've got little bits sitting on big bits and there's chunky bits and not so chunky bits. and um, It just worked out really well. I love that dot from the newspaper. Um, that was just a, a complete and utter find. It was actually on the other side of a I was going to use what was on the other side and I turned it over and saw that so it's just perfect. Uh, the other things I've used are um, scraps of um, scrapbooking paper. So just anything you've got sitting around you could use. You could use junk mail. Um, I know I usually bin mine but um, if you've got some sitting around I'm sure you could find some interesting colours or textures or patterns or words or, or something in it. So um, what this series is about is being inspired by someone and um, I had my two gorgeous little daughters had a very very restless night. They both decided to get up at 2.30 in the morning and neither of them went back to sleep until about 5.30 so both myself and my husband were up um, looking after them and trying to get them back to sleep. So we were all feeling a little bit sleep deprived the next day. Um, my oldest daughter went in to care and my youngest daughter um, hasn't yet learnt to crawl, was sort of practicing doing that. So in the background I had YouTube going and I came, <clears throat> I'm one of um, Courtney Diaz's um, patrons on Patreon and her artwork is amazing. I just love everything that she's, she does and I decided to go and have a look at some of her YouTube channels while I, I you know, needed to come out of my zombie like state and as I was watching I came across one of her videos um, to do with um, these things called scrap monsters. Now basically you've seen me do the technique on that little doll on the other page and that's part one of this series so if you um, the link will be down below that you can go and have a look at how I created that page. Um, basically it's a fairly simple process and again it's just using up the scraps that you've got 
So I'm not going to copy that for you because that is her idea entirely and I thank her very much for that and please go and check out all her stuff. This is just sort of creating the surface for how I then um, display the scrap monsters in my, my book. So all I'm doing now is with some of the acrylic paint, I'm going back in with that bubblegum pink paint and um, adding some colours and some stenciling over the top of my border and onto my page. While I've got the, the borders there, they're kind of fluid. Um, I don't mind if I'm doing stuff over them or if it overlaps onto the page or not. Um, it's, it's just something there for interest and to kind of give me a guide of where I'm going to do my journaling. So at the end, when I sort of put it all together, you'll see me go back and, and do more to the border to try and tie it in. But at this stage, I've kind of got that border happening and I've got something happening in the middle. And this is where you can see my scrap um, dolls to the side. Just going in with some chalk pastels. I've done a little bit of this, but I used a, a dark grey and I wanted to go in some black. So again with chalk pastels, um, usually they will rub off but if you rub in with your finger the oils in your finger will actually make them more permanent and they'll actually stay there so these are some of the the scrap dolls um inspired by courtney diaz or little raven ink that i've done and again you can sort of see a lot of the scraps i've used on my borders i've actually used on these little dolls both looking slightly sleepy <laughs> so i've got mama monster and then Eva and Aaron, baby Aaron down the bottom. So I'm using some multi uh, mixed media adhesive from iCraft to glue this down and just before I did that uh, I used the, the neon colours you can see on here are actually a chalk marker, a texture liquid chalk marker I got from my local news agents and they're the best buy ever. They're just amazing, very opaque, lots of colour, really broad um, tips but that works really well for what I'm going to be doing on this page. I'm going in with the Posca paint pen up the top just to again add a little bit of interest to my border. These are the, pe the paint pens and you can see by just pressing down with the nib you get some really cool patterns. Um, beautiful squares straight up and rectangles. So it's a great way to add some extra mark making and details to your borders or to anything you're doing. You can see on the, the larger monster there I've used the pink pen uh, exactly same technique, just dotting up and down, almost like a bingo marker to make those marks. Um, I don't tend to use um, liquid glues very much in my journals. I don't know why. No, I do know why actually, because I never have patience to let them dry. So <laughs> um, this glue works fairly well and does actually dry fairly quickly. There's using a um, glue stick as well so it glued down pretty quickly um, my tape gun ran out of tape so <laughs> that's why I ended up using liquid glue but it worked quite well in this instant so now I'm going in with the, again the chalk marker to write my title it's going to be my little monsters so again you can see how opaque that chalk is it is designed to wipe off but it's designed to wipe off glossy surfaces so if it's a porous, porous surface it will actually stick to do the second one, lettering isn't my thing, but I actually really love how this worked out. I used the broad um, white shypey pen just to write the word, a bit of loopy writing. Now I'm going back in with a fine pen just to add a bit of extra detail, make some of the ends of the words a little bit wider with a flare on them. Um, and having the finer tip to do that gives you a little bit more precision in what you're doing. There's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing, I'm just playing around. but. I really like the effect and once I've done this for both of them all I'm going to do is outline them um, pro tip here put down something to put your hand over and if you're left-handed probably doing that as well or you know be sensible like most people and actually leave it to dry but why would you do that when you're in the moment so going back in with my paint pen just to outline the, the ed edges of the, paint, uh, the pink and to make it pop and then I'll go back in with a darker marker and put a um, shadow. So I'm using, um, this is one of the Chameleon alcohol ink pens and it's in a warm grey colour. And again, um, I'm imagining that 
the light is coming from the top right hand corner so anything on the bottom left would have the shadow on it. I try to stick to that, I sometimes get confused and put it in the wrong place but it mostly works and again, you know, most people aren't going to be looking that closely at your writing to um, say, oh she's done the, the shadowing wrong on that letter. So now I'm just going back in and putting the kids' names because I, th I thought the monsters needed naming. Um, and you'll love this very, Austra uh, very Australian name, very Irish name. So it is actually Aoife. It looks like Ioif. Um, it's a good Irish name. It takes after Neve. And. This is just a Stabilo oil pencil to go back in and do a little bit of darkness around it. And I'll go back again over that, I think, at the end. So to do my journaling, I'm basically doing the same technique as you see on the, the page next to it, except this time I'm not drawing out the lines. On the, pre, on the pink page, I used a very um, a pink paint marker to draw, draw out some wavy lines. Uh, on this one, I'm not doing that. Basically, what I'm doing is just using where the words fit and playing with proportion, making large and small letters. Doing it in block lettering really helps to do this and trying to keep everything nice and close together. So what happens is while you're journaling it's actually adding pattern and texture to the background and it becomes part of your artwork. It sort of blends everything in together and having sort of that wave and the large and small kind of makes it more unreadable. In this one, because there is such a stark contrast with the white, it is fairly readable. Um, but, for example, on the other page where it's nice and close together, it's less so. It looks more like line work. And it looks like you've spent a long time doing it. It's really, really quick. You don't need to worry about loopy letters and, and cursive. You just write in block letters and fit it in. It's fantastic. So now I'm going back in with the Stabil no, not Stabilo oil pencil. This is um, an Epic pen. It's a carbon ink pen, which is water uh, water soluble. Yes, waterproof. It doesn't run with water. <laughs> and just to finish it off, again, it's something I did in the other page. It kind of ties both pages together with the same sort of lettering. Is doing the dots of the neon in the letters just to make it um, like my key lettering. So this is my page inspired by Courtney Diaz. Please check her out. Check out her YouTube channel. Um, check out her Patreon. She's amazing. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button to know when the next video is coming out. And check out part one to see the inspiration by Tisha Moore. Thanks for watching.